Hello and welcome to the 16th episode of Kerbal Space Endeavor. We have something special coming up and it is a asteroid mission. To give you a fair warning, this is my actual first try of doing a proper asteroid mission. We have a class A asteroid coming up and I was actually selecting the wrong satellite in the first time. So yeah, this is the orbit of the sat uh, asteroid we want to capture and it's gonna fly like this. And so we need to get out uh, and pretty much catch the same orbit to uh, arrive at it fairly early of its orbital period so we can slow it down and get it into an orbit that we wanted to. So we spin a little bit forward in time so we're directly underneath the trajectory of our asteroid and then we pretty much go into a polar orbit with our asteroid collector. This is a semi-new craft, it is still the same launch stage as al always, but as you can see here it has a pretty similar look as the space truck. I just didn't come up with any original design and there is actually some flaws in the design and what I did forget to bring along was um, the actual collector didn't have any solar panels on so it would run out of power which would not be such a good idea so yeah um, this mission needs a new mission and we have Bob coming up to fix this oh actually never mind it was Bill it was Bill it was Bill so yeah Bill is going up and he is going to attach some solar panels to our craft and while he's there he actually found some new science surprisingly and it says oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh I'm in space and yeah that reminds me of I'm in space space and whoever gets the reference is awesome it is from portal 2 and a little bit further on we do get some more science and this time it just reads we're over the tundra and he's more like Wee! <laughs> yeah moving on we do make it to the asteroid collector and now it is just basic construction here as usual with Kerbal attachment system and um, yeah so to continue on, um, fair warning, this mission is in no way a tutorial or whatsoever. There is a lot better ways to do asteroid collection missions. I just did it how I thought I could do it. I never really watched someone do it, so I just thought that's how you do it or that's how you're supposed to do it. But uh, you guys be the judge of how I did it and then flame me in the comments. However, Bill makes it back safe and sound. And with that additional science that we collected, we actually do have the ability to unlock a new tech tree. And what I'm going for this time after some consideration is I'm going for the rapier engines because rapier engines will allow us to build SSTO vehicles. So also we found some new contracts and this contract here would want an atmospheric flight over tundra scan and then the other contract wants us a bio drill from the highlands, a telescope from high over Kerbin and a temperature uh, scan in low flight over Kerbin's grasslands. So yeah, quite demanding. They come from the DT Orbital Magics, uh, the Orbital Magics mod that gives me cool science, and now they implemented special contracts. So yeah, back to our more important things like moving this craft around. Um, flying the design, I brought an extra tank of fuel and I wanted to use that fuel and I set up my staging wrong so now the drive stage is connected to it and I actually just had to bring the entire thing into a high orbit as you can see right here. 
So I pretty much used up these bottom additional tank up first. So then if I reach AppWaps, I can ditch the drive stage. The drive stage has enough fuel to get itself back into an unstable orbit and therefore being recovered. And we still have the asteroid collector completely fully charged. So yeah, things are planned wrong, but I always find a way to execute it the way that I need it. And things don't actually do go horribly wrong. <laughs> So yeah, we are still not in a perfect orbit, so we need to set up a new maneuver node. And tweaking around takes quite a bit of effort, so we're just gonna jump ahead right here until we reach a designated encounter. And then it is just a matter of time warp. So this actually took some retries, but in the end I did make it actually quite close. I was just really unsure if I was gonna make it or not. As I said, this was my first try, so I just went into target mode and tried to get as close to it as possible. And yeah, this was definitely not fuel efficient in any sense of the word or way. But I just kept messing around and trying to get to it and move retrograde and prograde around until I thought I could come closer. But I was so unsure and it was actually 3 a.m. in the morning and I was really tired and yeah, things weren't going to plan until I looked and it was only like 500 meters away. I'm like, oh, okay, there it is. Well, then, um, Let's get over there and capture this. And yeah, you can see it is a class A asteroid, quite small, just almost as big as our craft. And as you can see in the top right corner of the screen, we do have a um, mission for this asteroid, which comes with the fine print mod. So all of this is intended. I'm not just making things up as I go. Hey, hey, hey. So yeah, we get to periaps and then it is just a matter of slowing the asteroid down, which will put us into a polar orbit. But um, once we actually reach a polar orbit, I decided, well, polar orbits are always a pain in the ass. And at least we completed the contract, got a whole bunch of money in science, and then we decide, okay, uh, we still have so much fuel left, why not bring it into an equatorial orbit? So yeah, messing around with maneuver nodes, because that's always fun to watch. And we set ourselves up, get to it, and we actually have to start burning fairly early because yeah, as you can see it takes us over 2000 meters per second of delta V to turn this thing around. And it takes us a long long time, so the earlier we burn we're in a better position. And as you can see we do make it into an equatorial orbit with still a little tiny speck of liquid hydrogen left. But let's move on. We have another thing going into space with two new Kerbals going to Minmus. This part is the next part for our base and that is the Biolab. What the Biolab does, it will, if we ever going to collect a uh, substrate from Minmus. We can use that substrate and create new food. So we are not only just recreating food out of pretty much our uh, waste, <laughs> let's just put it that way, waste. We're actually be capable of creating new food as well. And for that we need the Biolab. So yeah, we set this thing up and we'll make it ready to go to Minmus. But back to the asteroid. The asteroid is in orbit and we want to find out if it has some science on board. So we send Bill up to investigate asteroid, the asteroid VPM-847. Wait, 842. It was 842. Was it seven or two? I don't remember. What was it? Damn it. Okay, 
So without any RCS, just a normal craft, we get to the asteroid. And now, of course, we will have to inspect this personally and in close-up. Bob is not so sure if there's an alien hiding somewhere on it. So he has to go outside and he has to check for it. But it doesn't seem like there's an alien. So we have the asteroid VPM 842 high over Kerbin and you collect a sample while the asteroid is high over Kerbin. Well, okay then, um, that is very informative. I was hoping that the crowdsourced science logs would have something new for the asteroids as well, but as it seems, they do not. But whatever, maybe in the future or they're gonna add some of these things into the core game. Well, we're still not even in beta, it is still an alpha game, so yeah. We'll just have to deal with it as it is and change things the way we like. So let's send Bob back home and he has a night side water landing. And yeah, we meanwhile have another launch going up. Even though our space truck is still on its way to Minmus, I thought let's use the time to send up another craft so when the space truck gets here we have a immediate chance for an encounter. And this part is almost the last piece for the base until we can start and get operational. And this is the mining part. We have a carbonite drill on board, we have a carbonite distillery and therefore we'll be able to produce liquid fuel, oxidizer, xenon gas and monopropellant on Minmus. So we can actually refuel crafts on Minmus. But while this is waiting we wanted to test our new rapier engines and as you guys remember we do have a new mission and our mission is we have to collect a bio drill score from the highlands, a telescope uh, scan from high over Kerbin and a temperature scan in low flight over Kerbin. So I designed this new craft to fulfill all of these three objectives. And this is actually the third design. I cropped out the other two designs, which failed or did not live up to expectations. All of the Kerbals who were involved did always survive, but it just didn't do as I wanted it or it uh, needed it. So yeah, once we reach the grasslands, we take our first science that we need, that is the temperature scan. It is nothing new, we have read this before, but the contract wants us to read it anyway. So then we open up Scanset and check where the nearest highland biome is. That is coming right up, so we have to go in for a landing. And yes, you see correctly at the back we have the new rapier engines that we already unlocked this episode. It seems like all of this is coming together, except this ground and this craft, like dangerous, very dangerous. But no, we do come to a stop and now we're gonna use the bio drill to collect the next part of our contract and somehow it turns all weird and stabs the craft instead of the ground. But uh, yeah, nothing new, we have read that before as well. So yeah, two things down, one more thing to go, we still have to go into a high orbit. Um, you see right here that the contracts did not uh, complete yet because you only complete them once you actually recover the data, which we haven't done yet. So if you have the same mod installed as me, don't worry about it. Okay, here we are. The rapier engines are switching over to internal fuel. We no longer run on atmospheric air. We're now using liquid fuel and oxidizer. And once we make it into a high orbit, we actually collect our orbital science. And yeah, we used up all of our oxidizer, I mean we still have some liquid fuel left which allows us atmospheric flight but no more space flight so we actually come in 
like way 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 too fast so this is actually the fourth re-entry try that I had I'm not even gonna lie this uh, took me some retries just because Ferrum, Airspace and Deadly Reentry are my worst enemies in this game. They really are. These two mods just make it so difficult. On the other hand, make it really interesting. So once we reach 30,000 kilometers, we do start to slow down significantly enough and we have some re-entry effects. The thing is, we try to belly flop into the atmosphere to decrease our speed at the most and protect all of our equipment on board the most. However, that also means that um, we are actually bouncing off the atmospheres. We're just like jumping and jumping on the atmosphere until we're slow enough to get down into orbit. Now, um, so you do know I did collect the orbital science from the telescope before I got in, before we did a re entry. And it was a smart idea because, as you can see, re entry was hard enough so that the orbital telescope broke off. So yeah, straightforward thinking. However, we do come in for a landing and a little bit more, a little bit more with time acceleration. Yay! It's not like I knew I was gonna make it for a landing. <laughs> but yeah, I was recovering the vessel and once again the game crashed for me. Um, this actually happens quite a lot to me. I still haven't figured out a way to make 64-bit work, so I do seem to have crashes here and there because of all the mods I have installed. I don't really want to change too much because maybe it'll frack up my save and then the entire series would be dead, so I'll just have to live through lots and lots of restarts. But there is a way around the bug when I try to recover a vessel while flying it. It is that if I recover it from the space center, I do not get a crash, which is rather convenient. So yeah, we have the altitude flight complete, we have the orbit complete, but we are still missing the drill. And what I didn't realize is that not only did the orbital thing break off, uh, the telescope break off, also the bio drill broke off. So, uh, the bio drill was not recovered scientifically, so we had to send another craft, a old craft, a reliable craft, to get the Highland bio drill scan. And this is once again the Science One craft from a couple of episodes ago with Jebediah on board. And he completes what was not possible in the previous mission. And there we go, the bio drill does its job. And now we're gonna recover it through the space center. And there we go, we have a completed contract. Meanwhile, our first part, the bio lab, arrives at Minmus. However, more of the construction for Minmus is coming up in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I hope you look forward for what's coming up next. Like um, what is going up with these flying donuts? However, my name is Antilles and until next time.